run out on Colonial Sports Center. The volleyball team's Cinderella season ends in a red flash. And would basketball phenom Sade Logan reach the 1,000 point marker over break? Hey, we got Mike Rice up close and personal. Colonial Sports Center starts next. Hey there, thanks for having us. So glad you could be here with us, Matt Davies, Big C, Christian Miranda, and Big C, it's a pleasure to be sitting next to you here on Colonial Sports Center. Matt Davies, always a pleasure to be on Colonial Sports Center alongside the Colonial Sports faithful. That's right, and why don't you start us off with some volleyball? To the Charles L. Sewell Center we go, Matt. The Robert Morris women's volleyball team finished the regular season competition with a perfect record of 8-0 in conference play. The Colonials were the heavy favorites going into the NEC tournament back on November 22nd. Playing on your home turf would be an advantage on most days, but let's see what visiting St. Francis PA would have to say. Game, set, match, it's the postseason. And at the Charles L. Sewell Center, it's the first set. The Red Flags taking on the Colonials in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. The Colonials, an 8-0 record in conference play. Again, the heavy favorites coming into this tournament, and it's going to start off with Alyssa Bennett. Setting it to Carla Brandock, but good defense from the part of the Red Flash. The dig, the set, the attack, access denied, do not pass go, do not collect $200, <laughs> and St. Francis is going to lose that set 25-15. to 15. And back in the second set now, it is Bennett. She's going to set it for Hannah Veith, but defense again from St. Francis, and the Colonials can't recover, and the Red Flash upset the Colonials in the second set 25-23. to 23. And back to the third set now. The Colonials, the set from Bennett to Graham to Waltice. And Waltice is going to block this one. Great defense on the part of the Colonial. She's going to tap that one down. And the third set is taken by Robert Morris, 25 to 13. For the Red Flash at the Charles L. Sewell Center. The set, a textbook set, a textbook kill. And the Colonials have no answer for the height of the Red Flash. And the Red Flash are tied now, two sets to two after 25-23 in the fourth. The Red Flash looking for the upset of the number one ranked Robert Morris Colonials. And they're going to take a final score, 15 to 13 in that fifth set and a 3-2 to two victory. You take a look at this box score, Matt, and Kristen Butler had Butter had herself one heck of a day, 14 kills, while Emily Waltice led the Colonials with 18 kills. That is a huge upset. Take a look, RMU finishing at 19-10, and 10, and then St. Francis of Pennsylvania finishing at 13 and 19, six games under 500. That is just an amazing shot right there. And let's send it to Ed Albert, who has more on Colonials Volleyball. NEC Conference Semifinal. A battle between two stalwarts for the right to continue their postseason journey. And unfortunately for the Colonials, the Red Flash came out the victors. I think that one, it, it was a matchup thing. Um, as far as the strengths of St. Francis and our, our the strengths that we have, you know, they you know, sort of cancel each other out. We came out and played really hard. They, this team just came out a lot harder than they have in the past before against us. And um, I think we're like, well, even team, they just ended up coming out on top. Even though they bowed out early, the ladies still had a successful season. You know, we've been pushing goals and the realization of those goals. The outgoing class has helped to shape the team for those who will follow them. They've made their mark on this program. The senior class this year, if we did not win the regular season championship, we would have been the first. That would have been the first class of four years to not put a banner up in, in the arena. And, and you know, I told them that's something to be proud of. And, and my assistant coach, Tyler, he, he made a point to say that you know they're going to come back 20 years of homecoming football game and they'll walk through here 
assuming that it's still in place and uh, you know, the banners are stuck. We gave it all we could. We left it on the court, and it's just it's kind of sad that that was like our last game forever. Although the outcome was not what they had hoped for, the effort these ladies put forth will not be soon forgotten. From the Sewell Center at Albert Colonial Sports Center. Robert Morris is the only school ever to jump from junior college to NCAA Division I in the same year in 1976. And the Colonials are the NEC record holder for league titles and subsequent NCAA tournament appearances with five, including last year's NEC title. Robert Morris also is one of three NEC teams to own a victory in the NCAA tournament. But that's in the past, and Central Connecticut State is in the future. Here we go from the Chucky, Central Connecticut State. They're invading. On the 17th of January, here comes the Big Blue. With the winning streak continued first half, we have a Rob Robinson steal and a facial at the other end, Big C. Great Odin's Raven. Nine points in 20 minutes of work for him. Okay, there were two 21s on this breakaway. You tell me who got the better of. I believe it was the Chappelle Show. I think so, and you will see more of him. But first, Blue Devils making some noise. Ken Horton, and Horton almost hears a who from Dallas Green. He couldn't quite get there. Horton, leading score, 16 points. The rest of the way, it was the Chappelle Show. Jeremy Chappelle from the perimeter. Give me all three of these. And how about the second half? Chappelle again from the arc, and we have nothing but the bottom of the net from Chappelle. How about one last time from the corner? That's Chappelle's 21st point as Robert Morris takes it, 76 to 64. Just too much JC for the Devils. And back at the Charles L. Sewell Center, Matt, we have Coach Rice pepping up his team. Right. I'm sure the pregame talk went a little something like this. If you score more points than the other team, you have a pretty good chance of winning. And I believe the Colonials took that to the heart because in the second half, up 52 to 20, RMU is going to take Latico Francisco's mid-range jumper as he stops Pops and knocks that one down. Francisco on defense now. He's going to rim this one out, but Rob Robinson, who had himself one heck of a day, is there for the follow-up. And more Batico Francisco to Rob Robinson with the dunk. Stop looking at my lemonade. And the Colonials <laughs> are running away with this one. Langhurst is going to have the outlet pass. Here comes Langhurst on the right side from Chappelle. And Langhurst is going to come up with the easy deuce. More Colonials offensive side. Langhurst to Rob Robinson. Wow. And that man is a beast. He finished with a perfect field goal. Nine for nine from the day. Career high 20 points. And there's Gary Walsh with the three. Jeremy Chappelle, who drank all the lemonade. Smooth like butter. And here oh. comes the man, the myth, the legend. More Gary Walsh knocking down another three. And the Colonials are going to hit the century mark. Go on to win 104 to 56. But with that being said, let's take a look at how the rest of the Northeast Conference is shaping up. The Colonials are alone on top of the Northeast standings, seven to one, an overall record of 12 to seven. However, Long Island at number two with five to two in the conference and a three-way tie at the third spot. Mount St. Mary's, Central Connecticut State, and Quinnipiac, all with conference records of four to three. Hey, forget about that three-way tie for third place. Look at the men, the Robert Morris men's team up at number one. And take a look at the season schedule for the men. We have a huge one coming up at the Peterson Event Center on February 2nd. The once ranked Pitt Panthers, they were number one in the coaches poll, but now they dropped to number four. We'll see where that goes in the weeks to come. And don't go anywhere. We have some more women's basketball on the way. Hey, Big C, they were back-to-back -back champs, so don't cut them short. They're just as good as men. We'll see ya. Come back here in 60. Right down the football. Bryce, a whole lot going on this season. But I can't go back now. And I doubt that our Dean Taylor.
Colonial Sports Center. You ready? The Lady Colonials basketball team came into the Charles L. Sewell Center this past Saturday with a record of 2-3 and three in the conference. With superstar Shawde Logan only 19 points away from tallying 1,000 for a career and ailing from a shoulder injury, let's see who would pick up the slack as the Wagner Seahawks made the trip to Moon Township, PA. And to the Charles L. Sewell Center we go. After losing two straight, the Lady Colonials would keep it close early on as Wagner came in ready to play. At first half, it's going to be Monet to Kendra Williams controlling the tip and the Colonials are on the offensive. The nice dish from Destiny Harrison to Latavia Vales, who's going to go down the right side of the wing and knock that one down. More Latavia to come as she unveils a nasty game. And show me the Monet, as Monet Harrison is going to be knocking down that easy deuce. Monet is money, Big C. And Ashley Olsen knocks down the three. And more Monet Johnson knocking down the tray ball. She had herself a double-double in this one. And then it's going to be Hicks driving, knocking down the difficult lay-in. And the Colonials wanted to charge in that play, but to no avail, Coach Muscaglia's cries go unhurt. Sade Logan knocking down the three. She's as smooth as the other side of the pillow, Matt. You can always count on Sade. And right on the nose, it is Sade Logan knocking down another three from the top of the key. And the Colonials are starting to create some space. But Sade Logan goes down once again. The shoulder injury gets knocked in the face. Latavia Bales knocks down this one. She unveiled a nasty three-point jumper. 3 of 5 from the field from three-point range and finished with 15 points, a career high in this one, 67 to 45, your final score. Excellent work, Big C. And how about the victims of RMU basketball this week? It was definitely Central Connecticut State. I feel for them. Sade Logan had an outburst. Early first, Logan, get ready to be amazed. She was a devil killer. Later, more Logan as she rejects the shot on defense and then showing her complete skills by finishing what she started. There's Sade, there's the stop and pop. Logan had 33 points as she surpassed the 1,000 point barrier. She's the 10th fastest in Division I history to do so. But not to be done uh, totally, Shantice Simmons on the other end with the bucket. Simmons led the Devils offensive charge with 16 bones, but in the end, Sade is a basketball god, and I can definitely see the light. Yes, I can. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. RMU 66 to 51 over Central Connecticut State. And you know that girl is like butter because she is on a roll. And back to the Charles L. Sewell Center for more Lady Colonials basketball. It's Long Island taking on the Colonials. The Colonials have won two in a row. That's almost a winning streak. And in the first half, <laughs> it's Kendra Williams finding Logan on the wing. She's going to break down her defender, a little spin move, and then the hot sizzle knocking down the mid-range jumper. Going a little and one on the, on the Long Island. You're making me jealous of these things. And Shawday Logan, more of her to come. Kendra Williams dishing out the rock all night, and Monet Johnson is Monet, so to speak. Monet is money. And she had a very nice game as well against Long Island. More Kendra Williams finding more Monet Johnson. And Long Island did not have any answer for the transition points of the Colonials. To the second half we go, and Long Island cannot find a, a way to stop Monet Johnson. A nice drive, a nice finish, and the Colonials are gonna come back on the defensive now. You're gonna see Kendra Williams on the bigger defender coming out of nowhere. Milk was a bad choice. Stay out of my house. <laughs> any other anecdotes you might wanna throw in there, and Robert Morris is gonna go on to win this one, 57 to 43. Now let's take a look at how the women's side of the Northeast Conference is shaping up. Sacred Heart is undefeated at the top at 7-0, while Central Connecticut State follows up Sacred Heart with a record of 6-1. And, and then there's your Robert Morris Colonials at a record of 6-2, starting to warm up in conference play. And I believe, Matt, you have a little more for us. Yes, we do. And guess what? Central Connecticut State, they're coming back on February 7th. A lot of big games for the Colonial, for the women's basketball team. And hopefully they can make a push up to number one. We can see both basketball teams get up there to number one for the first time in school history. That would definitely be something. Chris Paginski, what's up? For Colonial basketball fans, it is an exciting era to be supporting the program, as both squads often showcase quality team performances, and in the case of Sade Logan joining the Thousand Point Club, individual accolades as well. It's, it's a good feeling. It's a real good feeling. You know, um, for me, I'm going to be here for two years, and it's a thousand point mark already. You know, it's a big accomplishment. It's hard work, and uh, I'm just happy. The women's team has made it a goal to continue the stride for their third consecutive NEC title, as one of their leaders on the floor will attest. 
I mean, I, I expect what we did the past two years. You know, hopefully we'll win it again, but it's a lot of things we have to work on, you know, as far as you know, other people stepping up to score, as far as defense, my defense, team defense, as far as rebounding, my rebounding. And um, we just got to come together as a team and just, just work hard and not let up. The men's team is currently atop the NAC conference standings, with the man pacing the sideline stressing they need to continue to be great rather than good. If you were here earlier in the season, it just I was yelling about consistency. Would we'd be great for three possessions, and the next three possessions looked like we'd never been in practice. And tonight it wasn't like that. It hasn't been like that the last five or six games. So hopefully this team is taking a step forward. Hopefully they're not just a good team. They're great, and they want to improve. They want to get better. They want more, and that's what again, that's what great teams do. And no matter how much time exists between games, such as the weak layoff between Wagner and Fairley Dickinson, one player says the team will seldom lose its focus. I think there's still, uh, you know, there's still things we can work on. Uh, you know, in terms of you know, team defense, uh, running our offense better. You know, we use this opportunity tonight to get better as a team, you know, offensively and defensively. So there's not a day that we. You know, don't work on getting better because the day you take off is, you know, the day that the team starts falling apart and we can't afford for that to happen this year. All is calm right now here at the Soul Center, but every game night when the men's or women's basketball team plays here behind me, the atmosphere is anything but calm, as both of the basketball teams here on the campus of Robert Morris University have given students, faculty, and family plenty to cheer about. Reporting from the Sewell Center, Chris Beginski, Colonial Sports Center. I knew I wanted to coach, so after Hey, I Hoops played, fans, I don't go there. anywhere. Ever wonder what it takes to become a D1 basketball coach? CSC went behind the scenes to see how Coach Mike Rice made it to the top of the coaching carousel. Find out after this. Center. You ready? Endurance. Commitment. Sacrifice. Rowing is the ultimate team sport. The Robert Morris University women's rowing team is looking for walk-ons. If you're strong, athletic, and have a great attitude, we'd love to have you on the team. You have nothing to lose. I'm David Dietrich. And I'm Susan Defino. Our extension is 3865. Colonial Sports Center. You ready? Colonial Sports Center is privileged to have gone behind the scenes with men's basketball head coach Mike Rice. The Colonial King of the Hardwood spoke about where he comes from, and perhaps this piece will give all of you at home a glimpse into the success of the Robert Morris Colonials, who stand alone at the top of the Northeast Conference. And now be active, Rob Rob, and your help. Would you please do it our way? Can you hold some communicator or you were fine? I kind of already knew 
just from being in so many practices that I was an NBA player. I got whatever I could out of my talent. Uh, first team all state of Ohio and, and had several division one scholarship offers and I went to Fordham, but I knew I wanted to coach. So after I played, I spent Then went to Niagara, then went to Chicago State, went to St. Joe's from there, learned a tremendous amount of uh, basketball from Phil Martelli and fortunate enough to come to Pitt and then get my opportunity. So it's been a long journey, but a journey where I think, uh, where I'm ready to be a Division One head basketball coach. I look at it as, I think we should win every single game we play here. Uh, and that's uh, my level of demand, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, that's how we go into our preparation, that's how we go into preseason. So. Uh, you know, it is an interesting thing when you win so many games. Again, my first year to, to, to be a part of something that's never been done, is uh, it's remarkable, but it also, you have to live up to that, uh, that standard every year uh, because of how I grew up in, in, in a basketball family and uh, my father being a coach, you know, when, when I was growing up. Uh, his first thing when, you know, we, when we were rocketed off to that, that such a successful start is, they're going to expect this from you every year. They're, you know, 26 wins. Robert Morris University has never had 26 wins, so uh, you do it in your first year. They, you know, he kind of said half jokingly, but uh, in reality, though, if you know we win 18, 19, 20 games in the past, that's been a a huge success. I thought uh, the sky is the limit for this program. Uh, again, we don't have all the resources, the higher level Division ones, but what we do have is support uh, and. That's a lot of, it goes a long way in recruiting and uh, it's probably the main reason why I'm at Robert Morris right now. My sophomore year, we really didn't play that much defense. Uh, we didn't really help our teammates out. But this year he has us focusing more on defense. We're closing out more to the ball, towards the sideline baseline, you know, and just in case our man gets beat, you know, we gotta be able to, what he calls, help the helper. Help, help your man when he gets beat. He always brings intensity and just an edge to him, and he always wants us to be like him, basically. And uh, um, he just strives on defense. One, two, three, defense. Defense, defense. And um, if you come to our games, that's what we're all about. That's what he strives for. And he, he uh, just break, if we don't have intensity, even in practice or games, like he's going, he's going to fire us up. You know, he's going to light, a, he's going to light the fire under us, and uh, he's going to make the spark for us to go. You have to get used to my energy and my intensity. Uh, I don't turn it off. It's not fake. It's just, it's just how I am. I'll go down there and we'll play a video game and I'll be just as intense. Some people feed off of it. Some people like love the energy and the intensity and the constant demand that I place upon my players. Some people are uncomfortable with it and it, it gets some getting used to it. And, uh, not everybody is kind of built to stay intense and, and to have that urgency that, that I feel that you need to be, to be successful, whether it's my 13th man or walk-on or my you know, league scorer, Jeremy Chappelle. They have to kind of understand uh, why I'm doing it. They, understand, they have to understand the message that I'm giving, not always the way I'm uh, giving it, but the, but the, the actual message. Because I sometimes don't always relay uh, what I want to give them in a positive manner. I may use, whether it's language, may, whether it's being very demonstrative, uh, but they have to understand the message and not how the message is delivered. And uh, again, it's just, and it's a part of me maturing or maybe sometimes I don't need to uh, uh, be so demonstrative or be so loud or be so demanding, uh, but it's just, it's a process. We get more fans now, I think, too, because of him. You know, people want to see him on the sidelines going crazy, jumping up and down, you know, smacking people, you know, like the hands, whatever. And uh, he, he gets everybody fired up and gets into it. And uh, I think people like to see that. And we get more fans now. You know, we're starting to win. Um, you know, like last year, we had, we, were on a, we were on a streak, and we got, we got a lot of fans here. And that's what it's all about. We have a daily goal, and that's to improve. Our next goal is to win the NEC regular season. And now our ultimate goal is to go to the NCAA tournament.
When we return to Colonial Sports Center, it's time for everyone's favorite segment of the show. The Fave Five Plays of the Week, chock full of sugary goodness, are next. Don't go anywhere. Colonial Sports Center will be right back. <laughs> Center. You ready? Oh, look at that ball. Look at that ball. Green also tries to utilize the hill, but his rebound is just a little short. We're going to say that Orange is probably the best shot so far in the hole. A shot from Parr just lifts the hole so close. Quiet in the audience. Quiet, please. Just wide. Just, just a bit outside. Such a tight shot. Just be able to tap it and get a three, get a par. This is, without a doubt, the climax of the show, Big C. Coming in at number five in our fave five, you know Monet Jackson? Well, Monet is money. I think I said that before in the show. And she helped in a colonial win, Jackson finishing with nine points against Wagner. And more related to colonial basketball, again, it is Monet Johnson taking it the length of the court. And she's going to make a tough shot over the Central Connecticut State defender. I am William Wallace, making the tough shot. Monet Johnson doing a great job for the lead corner. Monet is great. Show and me the Monet. <laughs> <laughs> and at number three, it's number one, Rob Robinson with the steal. And at the end, we have liftoff. Robinson with nine in the win over Central Connecticut State. And check out Robinson against Wagner. He would help extend the RMU winning streak to five. And if some Colonials basketball is good, then more is better. Check out the defense from Jeremy Chappelle. You're gonna see the spot shadow on him right here. He's gonna come out of nowhere. And check this out. Stop looking at me, Swan. Take it back to Central Connecticut State. Oh. And I believe you have the number one play of the Fave Five, Matt. I believe I do. At numero uno, how could it not be Charday Logan? 10th fastest to 1,000 points in D1 history with a 33-point performance against Central Connecticut State. Congratulations to Charday Logan. That is just an amazing feat. And to top it off, the 10th fastest. That's just amazing. And I'm sure, like the rest of the NEC, when Shawty Logan goes for that jump shot, my heart stops just a little bit. That's exactly right. And there's a lot to be excited about here on campus. The girls at number three in the NEC, and then the guys at number one. So there's a lot to be excited about on the hardwood. And really quick, outside of Colonial Sports, how about those Steelers, Matt? Absolutely. The black and gold going to Tampa. We are, too. And back to Colonial Sports. For everything Colonial Sports, I like to go to ColonialSportsCenter.com. Why not? Just watch. You can watch today's episode tonight and make sure to check that out right after this show. And RMU Home Sports, don't forget about that. Women's hockey taking on Mercyhurst Friday at 735. Men's track and field, that is to be announced. Also, women's track and field, that is Friday to be announced. And each and every week on RMU TV, Channel 98, you can see RMU Live Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. RMU tonight, Tuesdays at 9.30. Colonial Sports Center isn't going anywhere. Same place, same time next Thursday at 9.30. And then, of course, Prime Cuts Fridays and Saturdays at 11 p.m. Forget, forget Conan and Jay Leno. Watch Prime Cuts. I think we covered it all. I'm Matt. I'm Christian. Take care, everybody. We're out. See you, you later. Stay classy, Robert Morse. <laughs>